special concert of Aspet singers in their twilight years. Try some homemade makgeolli by expatriates. Mexican Beach, a place to go empty-handed. Korean doctors successfully conduct Mongolia's first child organ transplant surgery. Stage director Chang Hee-yong unifies the global backstage. Hello, welcome to Going Global. I'm your host, Chong Se-ni. The last gun shop in San Francisco, one of the cities with the strictest gun regulations in the United States, will shut down on October 31st. The shop remained San Francisco's only gun shop for a very long time, and the city's strict regulations may be of some influence on other cities in the wake of recent shooting accidents. Paradoxically, the mere existence of this San Francisco shop has indirectly contributed to efforts in other cities to tighten their regulations. Many applaud San Francisco's decision and hope that tragic gun accidents do not happen again. And now, let's start off with our first story of the day. There are many elderly people who take up music as a hobby after they retire. A group of retired expatriate Koreans in Frankfurt, Germany, came together to form a choir, and they are singing their physical and spiritual illnesses away. Let's see them in action. This was the favorite song of his wife, who passed away a few years ago. Cha Jong Man, a first generation Korean expatriate, finds comfort in this song. Next up on the stage is 72 year old Pak Young Re. Pak suffers from Parkinson's disease and rheumatoid arthritis and was in so much pain that he couldn't even utter a word up until one year ago. However, music is helping him recover physically and mentally. This concert was organized by the Frankfurt Men's Choir. The average age of the members is 70. The choir members had little to do after retiring and were drawn together by their common interest in music. Then they established this choir one year ago. The choir meets once or twice a week to practice, and members have regained their health as well as energy for life. The concert lacks proper equipment and lights, but the audiences are as moved as if they were watching professional singers. The Frankfurt Men's Choir has only five members so far. They plan to recruit more expatriates who wish to mark the twilight of their lives with music and stand on the stage once again. Now let's move on to our next story. Craft beer has been gaining popularity in Korea. But in New Zealand, Korean expatriates have fallen head over heels for homemade makgeolli or Korean traditional rice wine. Recently, they have begun promoting the positive aspects of makgeolli to New Zealanders. Let's take a look. This is Lee Myung-ho, an expatriate of 13 years and a lover of liquor. He has been making makgeolli Korean rice wine for six years now. Everything from beating hard-boiled rice to mixing and fermenting the yeast takes place in Lee's home. 언젠가 고향 생각도 나고 또 차례하고 제사를 여기서 지내다 보니까는 막걸리를 한번 만들게 돼. There are other Korean immigrants like Lee who make their own makgeolli. 
They are active in the makgeolli making scene through an online community named Auckland Makgeolli Love. Recently, they've been promoting makgeolli, going one step beyond merely making and consuming it. Members are educating locals about this Korean alcohol, including its benefits and how it's made. When they heard that makgeolli has more lactic acid bacteria than yogurt and has anti-carcinogenic properties, locals showed great interest. Makgeolli가 정말 건강에도 좋고 좋은 술인데 아직 현지인들한테 많이 알려져 있지 않는 것 같아서 이런 행사를 통해서 현지인들에게 막걸리 만드는 방법도 가르쳐 주고. And but in the restaurant and I taste to be honest, I found this one much better. Yeah, it's really different. It's, I feel it's more original. Koreans hope that there will be more high-quality handmade makgeolli in the future so that New Zealanders can also enjoy proper traditional Korean alcohol. Now moving on to our next story. If you are a parent with children and you're planning on a trip to the beach, you'll probably need to do a lot of packing. One beach in Israel lends out children's toys and books for free. Let's see how this is done. This is Metzitzim Beach along the Mediterranean Sea, bustling with people enjoying their vacation. If you're planning a visit to the beach, you often need to pack a lot of things. Adding children's toys on top of that will make those bags even heavier. But the visitors to Metzitzim Beach are light-handed. Here, visitors can come without luggage, borrow toys, and put them back after they're done. Thanks to the free toys, there is no need to lug back sand-covered playthings home. Instead of them having to go and buy the beach games and then drag them to the beach and they get lost and then you have nothing to do with them afterwards. So the idea is to use them as a community and to share between people and share between people in the city as well. While children play with toys, adults borrow a chessboard and start a game. The backgammon corner is also open to all. People can utilize a truck library and read at their leisure. <laughs> This truck library has 500 books and opened at this very location two years ago. It was part of a plan to make the beach a more cultural place. There are very few instances of books getting lost, and in fact, the collection is actually getting larger. People not only borrow books, but also donate them to the library. In the beach libraries, we put toys in the, in the game centers, and we trust on people to use them to bring them back to add in their own toys, and we see that it works on an ongoing basis. There are currently two beachside truck libraries in Tel Aviv. There are books in five different languages, including Hebrew and Arabic, allowing not only Israelis, but also foreign tourists to pick up a book and read away. The city government's philosophy of sharing is evident in this free toy and book rental service. That they can use, finish using, put back in the box, and then let others use after them. And it's adding another aspect to what it means to enjoy yourself at the beach. Suddenly a trip to the seaside is so much lighter and hassle-free, without the toys and books to carry. Go empty-handed to Metzitzim Beach, and there won't be time for boredom. Now moving on to our next story, Korean doctors have come to the aid of a Mongolian child suffering from chronic renal failure, conducting Mongolia's first ever child transplant operation. Let's take a look. 14-year-old Purup De Oruzu has been suffering from renal failure ever since he was five. His blood pressure is high and even breathing is difficult. 
Purab Dero Ruzu needed a new kidney, but there wasn't any Mongolian doctors who could perform an organ transplant. In June, Korean doctors performed transplant surgery on Purab Dero Ruzu. Doctors extracted a kidney from his father, marking Mongolia's first ever child transplant operation. This operation was conducted by doctors from Seoul National University's College of Medicine as part of their charity program. The team had conducted a seminar on organ transplants for doctors from Mongolia's first national hospital. Then they performed Mongolia's first ever adult transplant operation and followed up with the successful transplant operation on a child. There is no concept of organ donation or transplant in Mongolia, so prior to the operation, Purupdeo Ruzu's family needed some persuasion. Purup Dero Ruzu, who couldn't play and go to school because of his illness, and his family conveyed their gratitude to the Korean doctors. The recent operation helped spread the warmth and medical skills of Korea across Mongolia. And here is our last story of the day. A Korean expatriate has become a stage director after falling in love with the performing arts. He is Chang Hee-yong, the stage director for the opening and closing ceremonies of the Pan American Games. Chang states that he feels the happiest when he works with other creative minds. Let's go and join him. There's quite a crowd at the Mel Lassman Square in Toronto, Canada. A nonprofit organization is preparing a peace festival. Preparations for the next performance are underway. The total supervisor of the stage is 32-year-old Korean expatriate Chang Hee-yong. Chang worked part-time in the performing arts while studying economics, and he enjoyed it so much that he changed his major. Armed with experience as a stage director, he took part in the backstage of the Pan American Games. Also known as the Pan Am Games, it is the third largest sporting event following the Olympics and the Asian Games. Chang joins some of the world's top talents in the field for the Pan Am Games, directing the opening and closing ceremonies. He was also responsible for the first and the last moments of the Parapan American Games. During the event, Chang cannot take his eyes off the stage. Other than ensuring that performances go on as planned, Chang also has to make sure everyone is safe. Working with Peter uh, as a stage manager, he's really good at what he does, at his task. Uh, like even at Pan Am, Parapan Am, the stage managing, he was like right there at the exit and entrance to the front of stage. So he's always dealing with actors and the rest of us and making sure our safety's there where we have to be. Chang will lend his aid whenever and wherever he's asked. Even for this free performance, he agreed to help out unconditionally. Chang established his own company in Canada early this year. His company's objective is to introduce both mainstream K-pop and other Korean musicians to Canada. 
좀 분위기로 끌어들여서 여기에 있는 뮤지션들과도 같이 작업을 하고 그리고 음악도 만들면 좋을 것 같아가지고. The staff of this large-scale international event is composed of various nationalities. Chang is a rare Korean in that group. His biggest wish as a Korean is to be able to work on the upcoming Winter Olympics, which will be held in Korea. I hope you enjoyed today's stories on Going Global. Did you know that the song Happy Birthday to You was copyrighted? Well, that's right, it was copyrighted. But now you can sing it without worrying about copyright issues. A federal court in Los Angeles judged the copyright held by Warner Chapel Music to be invalid, putting the song on public domain. Until now, Warner Chapel Music gathered about two million U.S. dollars every year on average in copyright fees for the birthday song. So while they may be saddened by the loss of income, others can look forward to applying the song in any way they see fit. We hear of surprising and interesting stories from every corner of the world. Going Global will be back with more of these next week. Thank you for watching.